911 abuse. People do it. And it's kind of like the ultimate uh, boy cried wolf type thing. You call 911 enough and you make shit up. They're not going to believe you when something actually does uh, take place. Such is the case of Keisha S. Kennedy, who's 34 years old of Zanesville, Ohio. One would think by 34, maybe you've graduated on to do other things other than plague 911 dispatchers with bullshit. But that's not what has happened. She's made hundreds of 911 calls for non-existent emergencies. The Muskegon County Prosecutor's Office announced on Monday, July 15th, that Kennedy's actions led to significant misuse of local emergency resources and tragically contributed to one person's death. Kennedy appeared oh to be... Oh, my God. Yeah. Muskegon County Court of Common Pleas on Friday, July 12th, before Judge Mark C. Flegel. <laughs> Just sounds like... <laughs> Sorry, we shouldn't laugh at that. Sounds like Mark Flegel's the judge of Muskegon, you know? Um... Where the fuck is my... Oh, in Ohio. Okay. Uh, she pled guilty to felony disrupting public services, felony making false alarms, and 25 counts of misdemeanor misuse of 911 systems. The charges stem from nearly 400 false emergencies calls made since 2020, many of which were placed multiple times a week and sometimes several times a single day. The Muskegon County Prosecutor's Office uh, detailed in a news release how Kennedy exploited local first responders for her own amusement, she effectively used local first responders for her personal entertainment for ambulance rides to the hospital, thus precluding emergency services from responding to actual emergencies, the release stated. Well, here's the deal. You have to, people get charged for those sort of things. How is she not just like bankrupt from those sort of things? Uh, or, well, or, read on it. I okay. think, I think we're dealing with a Medicare situation here. Oh, okay. In one particularly grievous instance, the South Zanesville Fire Department, the SCVD, <laughs> so just, or FD, <laughs> not VD. It sounds made up. <laughs> I said SFVD. <laughs> <laughs> that's a little different. I'm like, what? Oh, okay, that's me. That's me messing <laughs> it up. It's been a long day. <laughs> It's been a long week. Was <laughs> unable to attend to a person experiencing severe breathing difficulties because they were responding to one of Kennedy's false alarms. The person with breathing trouble later died. In another case, the Z, the SZFD was <clears throat> understaffed for a fire due to personal uh, personal attending to Kennedy. They release explained. If you're a medical personnel, you have to respond. I believe that is the law. It doesn't matter what they can pay mm -hmm. or not. You have to go. Despite It is. We had a frequent flyer is what we would call um, the guy. He, he'd just call. He, he'd call and say, I, I need you to come out. And we'd be like, oh, for God's sakes. Well, one day, I think he really was in trouble. Like, we, mm -hmm. you know, we went, but we had all kind of rolled our eyes like, oh, this guy again. Well, there really was something going on, but he had at least called maybe 20 times before that, and it was nothing. It was nothing. He was fine. And there's nothing you can really do about it, is there? Other than no. in imprisoning nope. the person or just getting late to the call and letting him die? <laughs> you you have to go. Otherwise, yeah. you're in a lot of trouble. Yeah. I mean, and yeah. you know, it's not for you to decide if it's an emergency until you get there and, and assess the person. So... Oh. You know, just because they're lonely and they want some interaction doesn't mean you have to deny them care. Aren't they charged so. that were fined for calling an ambulance? I mean, fuck. I mean, I, I've, I've had ambulances called before. I've had to call ambulances and you get a fucking bill at the end of the day. You get a bill if they're transported. Now, there, I think there oh. is a, char a minimal charge, nominal charge maybe. Mm -hmm. But if they're transported, things go up exponentially. And I know that because I we went to a, a car accident. A guy had rolled his truck, and it was Wisconsin. So I mean, roads alcohol were a was slick. involved. <laughs> okay, and oh, roads. Okay. He gets out of the truck, and he's clutching his chest, and he refused transport. He fucking refused because he said, "I don't have insurance. I can't afford this. I'm gonna tough it out." Mm -hmm. He signed the documents. And we drove away. And that's so fucked up that, I mean, because even if you can't pay, I, I suppose you could, you know, 
going. There's just a, like, aren't there like payment plans where it's like pay 20 bucks a month for the rest of your life, basically? Yeah, they could have worked something out, but he absolutely refused. And we tried to tell him you could have internal bleeding, all this stuff. Yeah. He didn't care. He's like, I don't want the bill. I will just see how this plays out. And you're allowed to turn away when somebody says that, even though that they could be. He, he was though, coherent. He didn't well, show any visible signs. We yeah. went through all of the hazards that that could be inside. Yeah. Um, he signed the document. We were released of any responsibility for it. Wow. Yep. Wow. Now, a lot of times when that happens, people refuse to be transported. Later on, they end up in the emergency room because shit gets real. Sure. Every once in a while, I get the mailers where it's like, would you like to be part of the, uh, you know, the the helicopter, whatever the fuck, so you don't have to pay, like, some egregious amount if a helicopter ever has to transport you? And it's like, 30 bucks a month, the helicopter death club, or whatever the fuck it is. Right, um, right. You get four transports per year, and then they charge you. That's it? Only four? You only get four no. helicopter transports per <laughs> Right? Year. What a fucking ripoff. I know. <laughs> Find somebody else. Can you just take the ride then if you get the insurance? You're like, well, I didn't get it four days in a row. Like, we're doing a helicopter ride. We're just going to go down to the uh, the food court at the hospital, get ourselves some mac and cheese and a Caesar salad. I got three more to use before the year <laughs> is up. Tomorrow, it's BLT day. <laughs> Sounds like that's what this chick was kind of trying to do. Yeah. You know? These uh, unnecessary ambulance transports and hospital visits were taxpayer funded through Medicaid. Uh, that's great to know, isn't it? All of our tax mm -hmm. money goes to fucking pieces of shit like this. Muskegon County Assistant Prosecutor John Little highlighted the severity of Kennedy's actions in court, stating 350 pointless ambulance runs is absolutely ridiculous. He further noted that Kennedy had been evaluated by a forensic psychologist to determine she had a fictitious disorder, meaning she frequently lied about her health. Isn't it? Okay, yes. 350 pointless ambulance runs is absolutely ridiculous. Isn't it absolutely ridiculous that we have a system that will allow you to take 350 pointless ambulance yes. runs as well? Yes. Yes. That nobody yes. says yes. this is yes. bullshit? I think that, yep. may, like, maybe we should look at that end a little bit, too. Like, yep. we're not just believing the fucking insane person every day that they say something's crazy and we take it as serious. Every single time their pager went off and they looked down and saw that address. I, I, I can't even I can't even imagine because there were certain addresses that would come up on my pager and I'm like, ah, oh, fuck them again. Yeah. You know, and it was probably maybe four or five times I had been at this person's house. Mm -hmm. So 350. Holy hell. That, I think, is the system being broken right there, right there because you're like, oh, yeah, we're going to respond to this like it's okay. It's not. It's not. And and why didn't somebody do something at 20, at 15, Why was there 10? not some sort of fine or something instituted like, you do this again, we are going to fine you this amount of money. And if you can't pay it, we're going to take your housing away. We're going to do whatever. Like, fuck, I mean, you. at some point, these people's feet needs to reach the fucking fire so yeah. they feel that they can't keep doing this, but they're so insulated that nobody's going to do it because they're protected by something. It's like, look, the only way they're going to realize this is horrible is if they truly reach rock bottom. They're never reaching it. We just keep lifting yeah. them up and taking them along. Obviously, some type of check or balance needs to exist so that this type of abuse is more quickly reported by EMS to law enforcement, Little added, emphasizing the need for systems to prevent such misuse of emergency services in the future. I blame the fucking system on this one for being that fucking incompetent. The court heard that uh, Kennedy's repeated false calls not only endangered lives of diverting emergency services from genuine emergencies, but also placed an undue financial burden on the community. Oh, you fucking think? Z or S Z F D or Z V V D the local what? I'm just making it up <laughs> and their local emergency services have not yet commented publicly on the case. Kennedy will be sentenced at a later date. The outcome of her sentencing will likely focus on preventing further misuse of emergency services and addressing the systematic issues that allowed this abuse to continue for so long. Uh, well, part of this is the fact that there's really no real public free cheap um mental health help and there's yeah. no way of forcing someone to get mental health help when they truly need it it is up to them and most people who really need it don't want to get it 
So that's another fucked up part of our system and how these situations that we keep getting into happen. Absolutely. This should have been stopped right away. Uh, she should have been institutionalized or jailed. I mean, this this got out of hand. It started affecting people around her. It was costing horrible amounts of money. This is completely unacceptable. And the fact that it got to the level that it got to, I don't even know what to say. And I don't think she was just like out there being a bitch. Like, I'm going to like just do this to fuck. She's clearly mentally ill. I mean, yeah. this is someone who I believe believed what she was saying and doing. But that's a mental illness. And the fact that we're just like, well, she's mentally ill. Let's just keep her. How about we deal with the fucking illness before we. God, I'd love to know the cost of how much this costs taxpayers in that community for 350 fucking pointless ambulance calls. No, you would not like to know that number. Like, that's going to be probably hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions, for this. And But because there's no fail-safe to stop someone who is mentally ill from abusing the system like that, and, and they don't even realize they're abusing it because they're mentally ill. Yeah. But we're too stupid on the other side to go, uh, this person's mentally ill. We should do something about this so they don't keep doing this. That's, I'm sorry, that's a failure on the competent side of society, not the mentally ill side. Want to listen ad-free? Want advanced access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.